Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. William Inman and this is um, a miniature lecture on degenerative myelopathy. I'm wearing this uh, uh, Denver Broncos jersey because today is 2016 Super Bowl where uh, Peyton Manning will actually um, make history hopefully as the world's oldest quarterback taking and uh, hopefully he'll win this evening. Now degenerative uh, myelopathy actually is a disease condition that plagues veterinary medicine. The term degenerative myelopathy means that the nerve tissue is actually degenerating and here's an important consideration that we found. We've been exper exposed to degenerative myelopathy cases for the last 35 years. In veterinary medicine you treat them with medicines and if they don't solve the problem there's no surgery or other medicational therapy that's going to make the animal any better. It's kind of a lose situation. Usually the old German Shepherd basically goes quote unquote down in the rear as we've already proven to you that an uh, animal with weakness in the rear legs can have chronic um, hip dysplasia can have subluxations all up and down their back. They can have a number of other disease processes that will emulate a degenerative myelopathy. And when those are all removed, very commonly it's considered to be degenerative myelopathy. For the nerve to be degenerated, essentially, any time electrical impulses stop going down a nerve, for instance, what happens is the nerve starts to do two things. First, it demyelinates. And as it demyelinates, it exposes the nerve, the inside of that myelin sheath, histones, to the body's immune system. The body usually doesn't see that protein and all of a sudden reacts against that protein like it, in fact, is non-self. And so it basically ends up with a reaction against its own tissue, an autoimmune phenomenon. And so histiocytes and plasmacytes flow into that area and start to break down the nerve, tear it apart. That is, by definition, a myelopathy. And so because of the nature of that aggressive uh, nature of tearing itself apart or attacking itself, it's called a degenerative myelopathy. Now the interesting thing is the further out on the nerve, actually the more exposed that, that demyelinization is. And so it looks like this problem begins at the very end of the nerve and it moves up towards the spinal cord. Anything that compromises nerve impulses down a nerve, essentially, is going to uh, uh, theoretically produce this type of phenomenon. And in some cases, particularly in some breeds of animals, German Shepherds are a classic example, we see a predisposition for this compromisation of neurological function down the nerve. As it progresses from the distal parts of the nerve up towards the spinal cord, it looks like it's progressive. So we see, see the term progressive degenerative myelopathy. Not only that, we see it a lot in various types of breeds that are prone in accumulating the primary problem that causes that condition, and that condition, in fact, is then called uh, progressive degenerative myelopathy of the German Shepherd, for instance. And it's actually become an actual disease diagnosis, which is a, a misnomer because it's not a disease. It is a symptom, a syndrome associated with the underlying cause. And you know what we're going to tell you the underlying cause is. The underlying cause of everything, including uh, Obamacare, is degenerative myel. I'm sorry, is the, uh, the subluxation complex, vertebral subluxation complex. And what occurs in a vertebral subluxation complex is we end up with one subluxation that organizes like this, and another one, and another one, and another one. Over a period of five to six to eight years, we end up with the amount of neurological activity that's available to the animal's musculature, particularly in the rear legs, dropping down and down and down and down. Once it gets below 40%, we start to see clinical signs. When we're able to, we've been exposed to these animals because nobody else is able to treat them, and they'll bring them in and say, maybe your dog could have benefit from an adjustment. So I said, what the heck? And we'd go through and we'd try to adjust these animals, and they'd have reeds up and down their back. They would have a back that looks like this on x-ray, and looks like a, a bomb went off in their spinal cord. We don't know until we adjust them how much of that we can rehabilitate. A lot of times nothing can happen, and the animal at 13 years of age doesn't have any neurological tissue to rehabilitate. However, very commonly what we can do is we can improve. If we see a reactive reading pattern, then there's an active subluxation complex there, and we should be able to improve this dog to some degree. Whether we can get it above that 40% and ameliorate clinical symptomology or not depends upon the animal that's aged when we get a chance to take it, uh, take it on, etc. If we could get to all of these dogs by five years of age, they would never go to the problem where they're at 14 years of age and can't have any strength to get up and go outside and use the, the uh, bathroom, essentially, which is why these dogs come in. So we go ahead, if you go to the vomtech.com, you'll see the classic VOM technology. It's no different for these animals than any others. 
we contact the wings of the atlas and go down the dorsal spinous process, rehabilitating these nerves down through here. And if they're able to actually rehabilitate themselves, we can actually take an animal that has really poor strength, unable to go up and down the stairs essentially, and within, within 24 hours, we have this animal back and moving relatively normal. Now, it's important to understand the animal's lost from 100% down to 40% or below before we actually see clinical signs. And when we go ahead and adjust these animals, we don't make them uh, back to 100% again. We may only get them up to 60%. However, uh, above 40%, essentially, it looks like they're clinically normal. And so it can look like we magically fix these animals. This happens all the time. But the fact of the matter is we may only bring this animal up to 35% and it looks like the animal still has a problem, but not as bad as it was yesterday. We can continue to adjust these animals as needed through the rest of this animal's life and get this animal into its late years, essentially, as, as a matter of fact, and, and keep the animal from having to be put down because it can't get up and go outside and poo. There are other therapies that we utilize when we do degenerative myelopathy. When we basically go through and we make these adjustments, essentially, just using the adjusting instrument. And again, I'd have you visit vomtech.com and you'll see how it is that we do it and why it actually works on the cellular level and how to apply it in your clinical practice. Practice. But when we go through this technique, essentially, and we make this adjustment and then do it again three days later and do it four days after that and then do it seven days after that and 21 days after that, the chances that we're going to get this animal straightened out are reasonably high. When we just use this device in a dog that comes to us with a diagnosis from another veterinary practice as degenerative myelopathy, three things happen. First of all, we end up with about a third to 40% of them uh, improve magically overnight. And so the animal is out of pain and the animal is moving a lot better with a lot more strength. And those are successes. There's another third of these animals that don't respond at all. They don't respond at all, no matter how much adjusting we do. And after five or six weeks of adjusting, we, we basically then at that point suggest that there's no neurological tissue left to rehabilitate. Therefore, the whacker isn't gonna make the, the, uh, the, the dead nerve come back to life again, essentially, and that's unfortunate. There's another third of them that are even more uh, difficult for us to deal with, and that is the animal that in the first two weeks look like they're improving significantly. And they look like the first set that I just told you about. It looks like we're gonna win, but they, they get better right off the bat, and then there's still no more tissue to rehabilitate. So they flatten out, and we really don't get a real good response. So the animal may still not be able to move adequately enough to be a normal pet in the environment. There's one other approach that we have found that we'll use, and I'll discuss that in just a second, essentially, by using frequency-specific cold laser therapy, and we use it to regenerate the actual nerve, something you've never heard about before, and I'll speak to you about that in just a second. So one of the other ways that we've found recently in being able to take care of degenerative myelopathy is to use the combination of the VOM technology, which basically flips all the switches back on and rehabilitates the nerves from the spinal cord all the way down to the peripheral musculature and their, and their interventions into muscle, etc., and other tissues. And then another incredibly important technology, and that's the use of frequency-specific cold laser therapy of 5 milliwatts. Essentially, what we're able to do then is we're able to laser the animal at the brain stem, essentially, with a laser like this. This is a frequency-specific laser firing 5 milliwatts at specific frequencies, and this is important. So we laser them at the brain stem and then laser them down along the spinal cord simultaneously. We do this for 180 seconds. We may do this twice a day for three days, once a day for three days, and twice a week for two weeks. The lasering looks just like this, or you could, you could basically do this for instance, in the spinal cord. And so what we're doing is we're doing the whole of the spinal cord simultaneously. This technique of frequency specific low level laser therapy uses the frequencies to induce the body's tissues to rehabilitate those nerve tissues. It wasn't until 19 or sorry, 2014 that we discovered that we were able to emulate what's called glial derived neurotrophic factor using the cells of the body, the Schwann cells and the oligodendrocytes of the cells of the spinal cord to regenerate neurological tissue. That's right. We're talking about regenerating neurological tissue in the spine. This work with some research was just recently been done and released essentially and the frequency for that particular glial derived neurotrophic factor is 114.7. That's the magic number. You have to have a device that will deliver a technology 114.7 essentially. Now, for those of you who think that you've got a laser because you bought a laser at a um, at a, at a convention, for instance, and you love your laser, essentially, you cannot 
use your laser. I'll repeat that. You cannot use your laser unless your laser is frequency specific laser and that means it can put in 114.7 or 115 cycles per second at 5 milliwatts for two different locations. You cannot make these animals better. For those of you who think that you can laser a uh, dog's back and make them feel better with a class 4 laser, you're right. However, you will cook the nerve tissue and make them worse. The reason I know that is I'm continually called by people who are trying to use class 4 lasers on degenerative myelopathy. The animal feels better for about 24 hours and then crashes, gets worse, and cannot be rehabilitated and has to be put to sleep. Do not, repeat, do not repeat, do not use a class 4 laser on degenerative myelopathy or any other neurological condition that basically could cause the, the class 4 lasers at 15,000 milliwatts instead of 5 milliwatts will basically cook the tissue. They work through cooking the tissue, heating the tissue. This device creates absolutely no heat. It basically induces the mitochondrial DNA of the cell to actually rehabilitate the cell, which is what the, what the body ordinarily does. That information comes from the brainstem and goes down to here. When we two-point laser these animals, what we're doing is we're actually asking, we're setting up a communication from the brainstem, which is where it comes from, and we're basically taking that communication down to the location of the target area, which is going to be the whole of the spinal cord. If you notice with these line lasers, we're able to uh, basically do the whole spinal cord at the same time. We don't have to be exacting because this particular type of laser moves through the whole tissue at almost the speed of light and the depth of, of penetration is not a consideration. Repeat, not a consideration. We can do this for a dog, a cat, a horse, an elephant, a giraffe. It doesn't make any difference. And not only that, we can do it from 20 feet away. That is the benefit of a frequency specific laser at 635 nanometers. Again, do not use class 4 lasers to treat any neurological disease condition. The animal will feel better for a short while and then be worse off than before you started, essentially. That was all the information that we really have. We have a huge body of information about frequency-specific laser and the use of the VOM technology on the website, vomtech.com. I'd encourage you to go there. You can click on um, a link on the index page, give me your, your email, and an automatic uh, series of how to do it, why it works, etc. will come to you in three different emails. I'd strongly recommend that you take the time to do that because I can teach you how to do it in those 15 minutes of uh, 15 minutes of adjusting. I'm sorry, 15 minutes of videos that will come to you, and the price is free. The benefit for your clients are numerous, essentially, and for you not to look at that or look into this as a potential for your uh, clients and also through the patients is not okay. We do this because the mission statement for our organization is to try to, to uh, solve as many problems in as many animals as possible essentially. So we want you to look at this particular technology. We'd love for you to become certified in this particular area, but we give the technology to you uh, in those videos. So I would encourage you to go to vomtech.com and see if this is something that you could add to your practice. Thank you and have a great day. Go Denver Broncos Rock.